The purpose of a share, which is also called a shared folder, is to expose a portion of a server's file system to network users. The idea is to just keep portions of that file system available to users while allowing other portions of the server's file system to remain private and unseen by network users. A share can expose a single folder and everything in it or an entire drive and everything on that drive. Windows Explorer is where you'll often administer shares, although in a moment I'll show you another place where you can do so as well. Let's create a folder. Let's call this User Files. The intent here is that the contents of this folder will be the things we want our users to have access to from the network. So we'll open this up. And just for example purposes, let's create a simple file. And we'll assign some permissions to this file. By default, it is inheriting the permissions of the folder, which because we just created this folder, is inheriting the permissions from the drive itself. The domain users group already has access to certain things, but let's go ahead and uh, edit those permissions. And we'll add just one particular user. And give that person full control over the contents of this file. We'll go back up a level, right-click the folder, go into its properties, and on the Sharing tab, we can create a new share. You'll notice that this is not currently shared, so we'll click the Share button. The first thing we need to do is decide who will be allowed to access files through this share. We'll start with the Administrators group, and we can also add whatever groups we like. So we can use the Users group, as well as an individual user if we want to. These permissions determine what can flow through the share, and we'll talk about them in just a moment. For now, let's just hit Share. You'll see now that the network path has been filled in. Users will access the contents of this folder by going to backslash backslash server r2 backslash user files. We can even test that right from the local machine. And you'll see that because this share is advertised, Windows is able to automatically populate that and suggest it as a choice. So we'll choose that. When users access something through a share, the share looks like the top level item to them. In other words, I can't go any further up into the file system hierarchy. I couldn't access the Windows folder or anything else that's contained on the server because this share represents my entry point into the server. Up in Explorer's title bar here, I can click on the server and this will show me a list of all the other shares on that computer. Some of those I may or may not have access to, and some of them, like the NetLogon and Sysvol shares, are actually there for special purposes. They're used by the Windows operating system itself. So that's what a shared folder looks like, but you can also share a drive. The My Computer level, I'm going to right-click the C drive, go to Properties, and then on that same Sharing tab, You'll notice that you know, depending on the particular drive, you may or may not be able to share it again. In this case, because this is my system drive, I don't have a, the ability to just click the share button. And in fact, as you'll learn shortly, there's already a share for the C drive. It's called an administrative share. That's one of the reasons this button is grayed out. The advanced sharing button is a little bit of a, a lower level way of getting to this. So I can force it to share this. We'll call it C drive. I could set permissions here, but I'm not going to right now. We'll just leave it at whatever the defaults are. And if I go back into server-r2, you'll notice that C drive now appears. Because that points to the drive itself, it enables me to access all of the folders on that drive. This is the broadest form of sharing that Windows offers. If your server has multiple drives attached to it, the only way to give someone access to everything is to share each drive individually. You're simply going to share the folders that contain the files you want users to access. Now so far we've done all of this in Windows Explorer, but I did say there was another technique. The downside of Windows Explorer is that if you're trying to manage shares and share permissions on multiple servers, 
it can get a little awkward. Microsoft provides an administrative tool for that purpose though and it's called Share and Storage Management. This console can be connected to as many remote servers as you want and it allows you to manage all of the shares. You'll notice the C drive share that I created and the user files share that I created. This helps me see a lot of other details as well, such as how much free space is available within that share. You'll notice these are all shares to the same drive so that they all show the same amount of free space. This is kind of a, a neater, more centralized way of configuring shares across many different servers. To begin a new share, you would say provision share. This allows you to specify the location of the shared folder, deal with its permissions and underlying protocols, and so forth. Really, the end effect is the same, whether you choose to use this console or you choose to use Windows Explorer. The console simply makes it a little bit more centralized when you're dealing with multiple servers.